The news some had been waiting for, but most knew was already official. Jaden Daniels is now the starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders. Dan Quinn said it. Uh, he's earned it, and this is not a surprise. Let's have a podcast. What up, everybody? It's J.P. Finley. It's Beltway Football, brought to you by Orsman Automotive of Virginia. We ride with them. want you to do the same thing. Check them out, OrsmanVA.com. Uh, joined by the big man. Um, this is a zero out of ten surprise. This job was Jaden Daniels. Honestly, pretty much since, like, the combine. Um, but I do like the way everything was handled today. DQ came out, said his piece. Jaden Daniels came out, said his piece. Um, positive day forward for the organization. Hello, big man. How do you do? Well, I'm doing well. I, I just, like you said, certainly the competition discussion early in camp was odd, I guess I would say, you know, considering we – kind of knew that this is where this thing was going to end at but it was handled in a professional manner from you know scouting to draft to pre-training camp through training camp to this point now uh i I think it was a no-brainer that we were going to end up here but at the same time it's good that we ended up here right um so the one line that dan quinn kind of said that i believe because a lot of this has just been like window dressing Right. Not to mention, if this actually was a competition, Daniels has dominated. He's been the best quarterback by a wide margin. Now we've seen him in two preseason games look quite good. He's completed, what is it, 12 of 15? um, 12 of 15 passes on three drives. To me, the most important thing is I think every time Daniels started a drive, they had a scoring opportunity. They scored a touchdown, they kicked a field goal, and they missed a field goal. Um, But every time Daniel started a drive, it was a scoring opportunity. I I thought that was really impressive. Um, Daniels has earned the job. There's no doubt about it. The the one thing that I thought was really true, though, was when Dan Quinn said, you know, the, the phrase I always say is the locker room knows, right? The locker room always knows. And he's like, Dan Quinn said something to the effect of, you know, guys know when they're being BS. Nobody wants to be BS. And and one thing they took off the table for Daniels was to have to come in and try to be some rah-rah guy he isn't because the coach made him QB1 on, you know, May 1st. And instead, he just got to come in and be himself and be a dude. I kind of buy into that. Because I don't believe that Daniels is a rah-rah type. Like, he, we've seen enough now. We've, we've seen behind the scenes, talk to him enough. Like, he is he is calm, super competitive. But, like, if, if he had felt some sort of fake push to act like he was something he wasn't, maybe that wouldn't have been healthy. I kind of think Jaden wouldn't have bought into that and would have just been himself anyway. But I do get that. Quinn was like, I don't want to BS these guys. That's why we went through our process. I, I I do actually support that. Yeah, I mean, I like that they went through that process. Kind of like you said, Jaden seems to me pretty comfortable in his skin in the way that he acts both on the field and off the field. There's not a lot of theatrics there, if you will. And I don't know that things would have been any different, but we've gotten to a point where we're three weeks before the first real game of the season. He knows he's a starter. You know, media knows he's a starter. Fans know he's a starter. Players know he's a starter. And I think everyone's pretty, pretty on board with it. I don't think there's any, uh, there's really any, any question one way or the other about about the whole thing. I am with you. I am with you. Um, Now that it's over, right? Like this process, like there were people that cared. He wasn't named starting quarterback right away. There were people, Riss Sussel, that actually thought Mariota might start a preseason game. Um, I never thought any of that. I I thought this was a kind of like old school football hierarchy, you know, mouth barf situation. Um, I think, are you cool with the process now that the process is over? The Jaden Daniels is our starter process. Yes, I'm cool with it. And for the record, Mariota might still start a preseason game because we don't know what's going to happen on Sunday night there. But that's either. still might start it. Who knows? Trace McSorley might start it. Who knows? Neither here nor there. Listen, I like the way that they worked him into the offense kind of from the start. And they did it during, 
you know, the off season period, mini camp and, and OTAs where he wasn't the starter and then slowly kind of worked him in with the ones before ultimately letting him take over. They kind of mirrored that process here as we got to, as we got to training camp and obviously through the first two preseason games. I mean, to me, I, you know, we, we harped on it a lot. I thought it was important that all this got taken care of before those joint practices. So we could get those first team joint practice reps. He got them along the way. He got work with a lot of different guys on this roster, both wide receivers, O-linemen, tight end, you know, running back and, that's a good thing for your rookie starting quarterback to be, you know, familiar with kind of the entire offensive roster top to bottom, because who knows who he's going to have to play with as the season, uh, you know, continues. So it was certainly a little wonky and a little odd because what our eyes told us was that there was no real competition, but I like the fact he got, he got to, got to play with a bunch of different guys on the, on the roster. I do think it allows some, gravitas to Quinn and Peters talking about competition all the time that it's like, Hey, we even made him go through it. And he was clearly the best. And we drafted him number two overall and he won a Heisman and even he had to go through it. So if you're the fifth corner and you feel like you could take a rep off, you can't like, I, I think there's some level of sincerity in that. Um, my beef, I think at this point, let's see how practice looks this week. But I, I think we've gone a little too long now, especially considering you've got a veteran backup in Mariota, where if there are 10 reps, 100 reps, 1,000 reps at this point, I want Jaden getting – if there's 10 reps, I want Jaden getting nine of them. If there's 100 reps, I want Jaden getting 85. If there's 1,000, I want – my math's not that great. I probably want him getting 900. Like, I'm done with the relatively – equitable sense of let's get everybody out on the field um and maybe that doesn't start till next week but like they've That's already up. shifted the practice schedule times if you notice that like they're kind of gearing this up like a regular week with tuesdays the off day wednesday thursday friday next week's funky because you got cut days and then an off week but like i'm ready to start seeing what this is going to look like week one in tampa i also need to book yeah. a flight to tampa well, so do i um shout out to tampa but like you said, they're starting to they're starting to move towards what regular season will look like. This week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are the last what quote unquote official days of training camp where we get yep. to be out of practice for the entirety of practice. Now we'll get into the regular season period starting next week, where we just kind of get a short period of practice where we watch, and then they get to practice behind closed doors for the majority of the uh, of their time out on the field. And quite frankly, I think that that's when you get into the full-time game planning, starters, backups, you know, going through kind of everything that's happening. And so I, I do think this week there's Jaden should get the, will get those first team reps. I do think there still will be a little bit of the, you know, go, coming in and out. And part of that also depends on Mariota's health. Uh, we don't, we're not hundred percent sure Mariota is going to practice this week. He was dealing with the groin injury last week. So um, that certainly will play into it, but for the most part, yeah, I think we're getting to that point where where Jaden should start taking over and be be that guy. Um, you think he plays in the preseason finale? The Commanders just tweeted out a really cool graphic of Jaden like kneeling down at a, I don't know, if this is AI or somebody built this, but like a fictional metro stop. It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I do not think we're going to see Jaden on uh, whatever day it is. I don't um, either. Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you is... what you can see, though, Mitch. You ready What's for that? this? An hour-long pregame show on NBC4. Bang. Woo! You excited for that? It's been a while since we've done pregame shows, since you've done uh, Yeah, I, I think I am. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And, dude, like, the only game on, <laughs> I think it's, it's probably yeah. the last. Now, I don't know if there's Monday Night Football, but it's probably the last. If it ain't the last preseason game of the year, it's the second to last preseason game of the year. So I'm excited for it. I think it's the very final one. I don't think there's any Monday night during the uh, during the final preseason week. Yeah. Well, so there you go. Um, I, I I promise you one thing, Mitchell. We'll at least have a Beltway football podcast uh, promotion in there. You just wait and watch. Oh, speaking of that, do you know what Uncle Don texted me? No, what did Uncle Don text you? There, there is nobody with a higher 
does not listen to the podcast yet is talked about on the podcast ratio than Uncle Don. Correct. Um, Uncle Don got a new fan balance and put the picture of, of me and you and Beltway football on the side of that bad boy. Hey, hey, how about that? Yeah, how about that? Shout out to Uncle Don, who will never hear this. Um, yeah. I think I think it's time for Jaden to get more work and just get to keep the starters out there. Like, I guess they're still doing their roster evaluation. I have a feeling that there's going to be a whole bunch of new players that did not spend training camp in Ashburn, in Ashburn by next Wednesday or Thursday. Don't you? I, I, yes, but also to that point, while it's nice that they locked in Jaden, I think the rest of the offense and defense are pretty dang close to having to be locked in because I don't know that a lot of guys that are going to be starting on September 8th for that first game are going to be playing in that third preseason game, the third preseason game on Sunday. So let's start getting Jaden reps with those guys who are going to be out on the first team. Let's start letting the defensive side of the ball, the secondary start working on those, you know, the communication amongst the starters. It's it's not just about just getting the quarterback going. It's let's get let's get this whole whole kit and caboodle ready to go. And well, and like and Wiley, against the maybe yeah. like to, Wiley may or may not have known Jaden's cadence. Like all these things. Let's let's get let's get going. Let's get focused. Um, not that they're not focused, but like let's get to the real deal here. Um, it's a positive step. It's zero surprise. Um, but it's a positive step. And, and I think like, I think Jaden's the right guy, frankly. Um, all right. Now, is there anything, is there any other angle for us to examine Jaden being named the start? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. I don't either. Um, a couple other things we learned that were like kind of legitimate. Um, we got an update on Jordan McGee who had surgery on his meniscus. Like perhaps you and I had wondered. Um, they were very clear that it's not a shutdown for the year kind of thing. Um, but he sounds like he's going to miss some time. It puts them in a tricky spot kind of because you're obviously not going to IR him now because then he's shut down for the year. So you got to break camp with him and then maybe you can then move him to IR short term, or maybe you don't have to, they're probably exploring all that. Um, but I think it's positive news for McGee that they're clearly expecting him to be back this year. Yeah, I, I've heard that it, that it's just a trim that he's having with that with that meniscus surgery, right. which is generally about a four week recovery time. So I mean, depending on when that thing gets done, I, I don't think there's any real real world that he's ready um, for week one against the Bucks. But certainly, it's possible that he's ready week two against the Giants, and I would say probable that we'll see him at least by Monday night um, that game against the Bengals on the twenty third, which is you know, more than a month from now. So uh, I, I think you're looking at about a four week, four, four ish week recovery. So I think that's good news considering the fact that we hadn't heard any update from it. And, you know, we saw, we, we saw him get hurt and not come back. I, I, I was under the, I was concerned this was going to be a year long thing for him, but sounds like a couple weeks and, uh, and he should be back. So probably break camp on the roster and then go to, go to IR, like you said. Yeah. I think that sounds about right. I also think they may have to add it linebacker if that's the case. Um, I mean, at some point we need to do a roster breakdown and I don't know what the hell. Offensively, my question is, do you keep a fourth tight end basically? Um, and then you could ask like, who is RB three? I don't, I kind of think it's Wiley, but, and then mm. O lineman, who are they? How many? Like after eight, it gets kind of fuzzy to me, O line wise. But defensively, dude, who are your corners? How many of them can you keep? How many safeties are you keeping? Who right. are your linebackers? Who are your linebackers? How many of them are you keeping? And then on the D line, it gets a little sketchy for me after like nine. And I the the defensive final roster is tough to figure out. Yeah. And and honestly, we got the update on Johnny Newton and Brandon Coleman as well. Both of them are going to start doing a little individual work, but kind of didn't really get a lot of clarity as to where they were going to live. Where does Johnny, does Johnny Newton start the season on the roster? Is he, you know, 
an IR guy, what what does that look like? Same thing goes for, you know, same thing goes for Brandon Coleman. Obviously, it doesn't seem like his injury is an IR type thing, but again, you know. The way – so DQ talked about that. Are you hearing these beeps, by the way? I'm sorry if you are. No, not at all. Okay, good. Um, that's – I realize what I need to do here. Um, DQ said, you know, Newton and Coleman are going to do individual work this week. They're not going to get the team stuff. Coleman's a little bit ahead, but not by a wide margin. I don't think you IR either of those guys. If they're able to do individual work, you don't want to shut them down for a year. But, like, coming through, Newton to me – so, DQ had a really interesting nugget on Coleman. He was asked if he needs to see Coleman in preseason before he could play him in the regular season. And he said there's a big difference between need and want. It's kind of like the old podcast game, should and will. I, I think yeah. – they don't need they don't need to have Coleman out there, but they sure as hell want to see him out there before they line him up against a Todd Bowles defense in Tampa. Yeah. Oh, I mean, sorry, I thought you were continuing with that. I no. totally I very much want to see him, but if these guys are confident enough with them, then they can always just, you know, throw him out there first game. Seems interesting maybe a little borderline dicey to uh to do that but if this coaching staff is confident in them then they then they're confident in them you know yeah um it's gonna be interesting i i think we're starting to see what the future looks like for sure with Jaden and you know the, what did you think of Jaden's comments i i thought he was just being himself telling the truth He's pretty comfortable. You know yeah. what I mean? That's kind of always where I am with Jaden. Like, he doesn't say a whole lot that that pops, that makes you, you know, say, oh, my gosh. But at the same time, he just has this quiet confidence about him, and he's happy being the dude that he is. He doesn't try and pretend to be anybody else. I love it. And, and dude, I got a text from somebody asking me, how would you compare Jaden and Robert? And I was just like, I wouldn't. <laughs> like, at all. Like, I Having spent a little bit of time with Jaden now and, and having getting to, get, gotten to know Robert a fair amount over the years, they're just wildly different people. I don't think they're really that similar as football players outside of their both quarterback. Yeah. Um, but, like, I, I think Jaden's a way better pocket passer already. I think Jaden's just a very different person. Um, he's just easy going. I think their approaches to the game are quite different as well, and part of that has to do with personality-wise and – you know, how flamboyant RG3 was and, and over the top with everything he did. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't – there's not a lot to compare those two except that they're both mobile quarterbacks. But even in their run games, I there's there's big differences between the way RG3 attacked and, and the way that uh, the way that Jaden seems to. Yeah, I'm with you. I totally agree. Um, yeah, honestly, the only, like, newsworthy thing from Jaden's presser was that he said he doesn't practice sliding. I, I think people should realize that nobody really practiced his sliding. Like I know the bears did that slip and slide thing, but that was kind of a bit like that was more fun. I mean, Jim Zorn used to be out there swinging noodles, like pool noodles around. Um, Dan Quinn joked that he'd take him down to Nats park to practice sliding. I, yeah. I, if you're worried about sliding in general. Okay. If you're worried about sliding because of the one tackle in Miami the other night, relax. Take a, take a, take a gummy. Did you say take a gummy? I did. Nice. I mean, if you remember, RG three had a real hard time sliding when he was here. Um, so I, I think that's a, uh, it's one of those things. Remember the first time RG tried to slide with the with the big uh, knee brace he had on was. And like he yeah. came up and the whole thing was like mangled bent because there were just big things of grass. Listen, I don't think it's I don't think it's the uh, I don't think that's the uh, the most important thing that Jay, that uh, Jaden Daniels is going to learn this uh, training camp. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I I feel like we've kind of hit on everything here, unless I'm missing something. Um, what I asked Dan Quinn because so much of this like almost becomes like glazing with with these guys you know what i mean it's like oh well how great is everything so i asked dq like hey have there been any rookie moments where he like did something wrong and he's like yeah but 
and he brought a couple specific examples up, but then he said the best part was, I think there was one play maybe against the Jets where he forgot to signal for a motion. So the motion never came. The play went off. And as soon as the play ended, he realized, like, I'm sorry. I know I forgot to do it. Like, that to me is almost equally as impressive as everything he's done. Like, I, it's like how, how much I love the throwaway against the Dolphins. Right. It's all part of the, it's all part of the growing uh, and, you know, maturing that he's going to be doing those sorts of things are why it's important that he, to me, why it was important that he got into the preseason games, because when you get in the heat of the moment with a million things happening and new defenses throwing different blitzes and stuff at you, you're going to forget things. You're going to, you know, overlook some, some things. And I think that's part of the reason it was important to to get him uh, on the field in the, in the preseason. Yeah. Agreed. Um, all right, let's boogie. Uh, we'll be back out here. So let's tell the people some truths. Um, we got this pregame show coming, dude, or postgame show rather, uh, on the Monumental app. First one will be after the Tampa game, right? Yeah, it'll be uh, about an hour or hour and a half after uh, the game's end. You'll have JP and I live on the field. We'll have graphics. We'll have B-roll. We'll have pictures. We'll have the whole. We'll have the whole McGillicuddy. It's gonna look good. Um, I'm excited about it, and uh, we're gonna go through and do all of our uh, all of our typical post game stuff, including the hundred chips and the over unders and all the fun things that we've done over the years. We'll be doing them live. All right, so. You say you want to watch us. We're going to need you to watch it. All right. We're all in this together. We're it's a family affair. Um, so we're going to need you there September 8th in Tampa. Um, now this week is training camp. So we'll all be out here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I assume, big man. Correct. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you will get a pod Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. When we get into next week, though, we're, we're back to probably three a week. I, I assume we'll do one roster cut. So say that comes down Tuesday afternoon, evening, right. and then maybe we're all out here Thursday. Um, and then it's, you know, I it, it, we've almost made it, dude. We've almost made it. Football's coming. I mean, yeah, regular season is right around the corner. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, all right. Jaden's a starter. Rejoice. If you were ever concerned about this, Go see a psychiatrist. Thank you for listening. You made us far. I owe you beer.